Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? Welcome back for another video on the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing and showing you guys my dividend stock portfolio, my dividend growth stock portfolio on Wealth Simple Trade. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is gonna be the portfolio growth. So let's do a quick little recap on the portfolio. And let's see how stocks have been doing for the week. Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? We're gonna start things off with the stock portfolio, do a quick little update here on all of our accounts. So we have $120,000 in total inside of our stock portfolio, inside, inside my stock portfolio and Wealth Simple Trade. Um, we're kind of looking at basically two accounts here. We have the personal account and the TFSA. So the personal account is $14,000 and the TFSA is $106,000. Now obviously the TFSA has been my big focus. We've been basically throwing as much money as I can and my goal was initially to max this guy out and we just recently maxed out a couple months for this year. So that's $106,000 inside the TFSA. Um, at the time of doing this video, it is Sunday. Um, so markets are closed today, but when we closed on Friday, um, our TFSA closed that with a gain of, I guess, $270. The one week return is plus one. So we got a little bit of a jump this week. That's $100. Uh, $1,213 in total gain. The one month return is 5%, just shy of under $5,000. So quite a bit of a gain um, for this month, both in terms of US stocks, Canadian stocks, as well as our dividends. Um, the past three months is up 3%. So once again, basically since the start of the year, uh, it's been a little bit up and down, but again, you can see on the graph here in front of the screen, just consistent growth uh, basically there. One year return, all things considered is still down a little bit uh, it's about negative one percent but 2022 was pretty you know pretty much a negative year all across the board but we are kind of getting back to where we were and then the all-time return inside of our tfsa is up 12 percent, which is about eleven thousand dollars so once again just being consistent with things and we can really see here you know i've just also been steady with the net deposits i've kind of picked that up over the past couple months uh to consistently grow the account and that's been a big theme of my, my investing is just consistency is definitely the way to do it, guys. Um, head on over to the personal account, which is a um, basically an account that I put any extra money I have. Um, going into the next couple months or so, I'm going to be putting money inside my fiance's TFSA. Um, also potentially getting an RRSB going, but again, we're kind of looking at some of that stuff. But the personal account is focused more on dividend stocks. So the one day return for the dividend stocks is sitting at 0%. Uh, the one month return is up 6%. So a lot of our Canadian stocks are doing quite well. Um, the one year return for the personal account is negative four. Uh, but keep in mind, um, we did see um, a big dip from AQN and some other stocks there. I also pulled out a lot of stocks here. I basically sold them and transferred them into my TFSA. I'm going to probably take the rest of the $14,000 and put it into my fiance's TFSA. Um, I don't know, maybe over the next month or two. We also probably will most likely have to take some money out for taxes and whatnot too, since that's coming up. But um, all time return for the personal account is actually pretty nice. 8%, about $1,000 gain already. And once again, if we kind of scroll down here, this is much more focused on Canadian stocks, Canadian dividend stocks, as well as Canadian dividend growth stocks. And the last thing we'll cover really quickly is going to be all of our accounts basically squished together. So uh, we have $133,000 in total between me and my fiance. That's our net worth. Um, that's basically all of our portfolios combined together. Do a quick little recap on this. I like to do a uh, recap on everything here. So we have the portfolio yield of about 3.78%. Our yield on cost is 3.91%. So that's obviously because the markets are growing. We're going to get that yield on cost plus with the dividend increases. We're looking at an annual income of $5,000 for all of our stocks together. And the different po portfolios that we have is the first one is going to be the ESSOP -E with my employer, which has been steadily growing since last year. We're looking at about $922 in that account. Um, currently holds Loblaws because I work for Loblaws and that's up about $72, $72 which has been doing quite well. The stock's actually been performing quite a bit quite a bit good, uh, lots of growth, and of course they, are, they have their dividends and whatnot as well. Um, the second account is the personal account, which you guys have already seen. Uh, the third account that we haven't talked about yet is my fiance's TFSA, and this is very much just focused on ETFs, so she's got HYLD, VDY, and VFE, very simple. Uh, she likes to keep it simple. And then the last one, of course, is my TFSA. And then all together, uh, we have them combined here for $133,000. So that's a quick little overview on the portfolio, bit of a bird's eye view um, of all of our accounts together. So as you guys know, one of the big things I like to do in this channel is showcase you my portfolio and I'm all about transparency. So one of the things I wanted to do in this video, and one thing I want to talk about is the fact that I've been promoting Blossom and I've been active on Blossom and showcasing you guys the app quite a bit over the past couple months. Now they do have a new Blossom Pro subscription service that is coming out. Now there's a lot of things that still need to get worked out and everything isn't really done there yet. So what I'm going to be doing inside today's video and, and the topic of dividends, um, I'm going to be using some of the features to show you guys some cool stuff. Now once again, 
again a lot of this stuff isn't out yet it's kind of in the works but expect it to come out within the next week and a half or so and if you guys want to follow me alongside you guys want to see all my investments you guys want to see all my stocks all my dividends all that cool stuff and see all the posts I make on Blossom you guys can sign up by clicking the link in the description of this video it's completely free to sign up it takes a couple seconds and by doing so you guys are supporting the channel by quite a bit now the main focus of the today's video is going to be on dividends and covered call ETF so let's jump inside things let's talk about dividends I'll show you guys how dividends have been working in my favor and then I'm going to spend some time talking about covered call ETFs and then we'll focus on my stocks and the total return of my stocks thus far. So I can't remember if I talked about it in the last video, but we did get lots of dividends for this month. It's going to be a pretty big month for dividends. In fact, I think we did hit an all-time high. I'll talk about this when we actually add them up later on in the video and I show you guys the uh, total dividends for April so far. It's April 16th at the time of doing this video. So we had some small dividends roll in here. Then we got, of course, our big quarterly dividends like VFE gave us $175. We have some other ones that have been trickling through. And then we got VDY for $103, which is quite a bit. And keep in mind, this is just inside my Wealth Simple Trade account, these ones. Um, we have HYLD once again giving us $130. So even though HYLD is not a huge holding in our portfolio, I think it's about 10% or 12% in my portfolio, it's giving me some pretty solid dividends and then we had AQN which gave us some dividends yesterday so once again these all add, add up together we'll take them together and let's kind of check out the monthly income and if we scroll on over and check out the monthly dividend income we can see how our dividends have basically been compounding uh, since we first started investing I've just been kind of keeping at it here and we did hit an all-time high actually for month of April so far and I think we still have a few dividends coming up towards the end of the month I think we still have like TD Bank and stuff like that um, those might fall into next month depending on when they get reported into our account but nonetheless you know we did hit a, a new high um, we might even hit $600 we'll have to wait and see but that's $574 that's a new high inside the account um, our dividends we've gotten is $525 from my accounts and then $49 from my fiance's account so once again we both get the benefits because we hold the ETFs so whenever every third month or so we get a nice big dividend or third or fourth month or so we get like a nice big dividend and then I added up all of our dividends together and it adds up to be a total of $6,347 in total um, so it's been consistently growing and uh, once again just a quick little update on the monthly dividends and this this number has, has been growing pretty consistently the other thing I'm going to look at really quick Quickly is going to be some cool information with our dividends. So so far right now, our dividends are inside my accounts of Wealth Super Trade are earning me four thousand seven hundred thirty-seven dollars annually. That's three hundred and ninety-four dollars monthly, which is pretty cool on average. And then daily, that's twelve dollars and ninety-eight cents. So I'm making about thirteen bucks a day. And then hourly, my dividend stocks are paying me fifty-four cents an hour, which is pretty cool. And here's the different stocks and how much they're actually con contributing inside my dividend portfolio. Kind of a cool perspective. And before we go any further, and I show you guys the total returns of my entire portfolio, I want to talk a little bit about cover call ETFs because once again I keep seeing a lot of um, people confused about these funds they might not understand them and there's just a lot of misinformation now cover call ETFs are definitely focused on yield you know increasing yield inside your portfolio but you look if you look at a graph for example if I go here and we'll focus on the ones that I buy so I have HYLD and I have HDIV inside my portfolio they represent about 10 to 15 percent overall my entire portfolio and I'm kind of like them sitting there about that 15 to 20 percent range and the entire purpose is to increase my passive income you know I hold a lot of VFV I hold a lot of growth stocks so I don't have a high yield and the reason my, my portfolio has like a decent yield is because these covered called ETFs are adding quite a bit in there um, and if you guys want to see all my stocks like I mentioned before check out the link to Blossom Social all my stocks everything is in there so you guys can see that stuff now one thing I want to point really quickly is if we go to HDIV and let's say we look at HDIV stock and we look at the all-time return you might look at this over the past year or so and see it's down negative 1.27% you might look at that and be like, you know what, that looks kind of crappy, right? Now, obviously, last year was a bad year for the stocks, but it's been about a year and a half, and people just like they'll see this. Or if we go into and we type in HYLD or something, which is it hasn't done as well because HYLD is actually like got hit pretty hard last year because it had a lot of tech stocks, a lot of the markets. It hasn't done very well. It's actually down negative 23%. So people will look at this and they'll be like, oh, geez, you know, I don't know, that doesn't look too good. It doesn't feel too good. But you know, the reality, guys, is you guys got to look at total return here. Um, and when you buy these funds with their cheaper yield you're locking those yields in and if you buy them during a dip like last year where the market dipped when the markets do recover you're going to get a lot of success and the longer that dip is and the more those dividends can pay out and the more you can reinvest them or whatever it is you're doing with the dividends the better off you're going to be so we're going to take a peek at HDIV and HYLD total returns versus the S&P 500 and just get a little perspective and of course you know this is just the short term long term things are going to kind of be differently and we would expect you know a growth based fund to you know on average typically outperform a cover call ETF 
by a little bit. But the reality is you guys need to understand like what's really going on here. So when we look at, we'll start with HYLD first, since this is the US market one. If we go here, I'm using stock and lock to basically compare them here. We can see HYLD total returns. So this is gonna be the dividend yield plus the stock appreciation. And then we're gonna look at SPY price uh spy total returns which is going to be the gray one so hyld is going to be one going to be the blue one um spy is going to be the gray one now hyld is currently sitting up all time about negative 13.45 percent spy is sitting at negative seven percent now again hyld got really hammered last year in every single month that the market kind of stabilizes or we see a little bit of growth you're going to be getting one point whatever it is percent dividend growth inside your portfolio so i do predict even though it, it doesn't look the best right now but it's even not that bad it's only down about i guess six to seven percent uh but you know all things considered i think it's going to do really well and then if we look at the um, the way the markets are going, I think HYLD is really going to kind of bounce back this year, but who knows. Uh, but the benefit is you're locking in that yield, you can keep it, and you're going to perform well. So, of course, HYD is a little bit lagged behind, but, you know, that's just the way things are going. If the markets do kind of trade flatlined or we see recovery, I do expect it to perform well. And I think over the next year or so, it's going to do good. Now, if you look at HDIV, for example, and compare this to the S&P 500, this is the one that's really going to surprise a lot of people. And of course, again, this is a small period of time. There's still lots of time to go. And I would expect S the S&P 500 to outperform these funds in the long run. It's the reason why I hold 50% of my portfolio in the S&P 500. But to say they're bad investments or they don't work or they don't serve a purpose in a portfolio or if you don't invest in them in the right time, I think it just sounds kind of silly. Because if we look at SHDIV, for example, the blue one here for HDIV is going to be a total returns. And the black one here is going to be the S&P 500 total returns. Now look at HDIV. HDIV with the dividends reinvested and the stock appreciation is currently sitting at a 14% gain since uh, it's about um, September-ish so of 2021. So that's about two, oh, two and a half, like about two years or so, almost two years, almost two years. Um, and SP500 is now negative 5%. I mean, that is a crazy crazy difference you know so hdiff has vastly outperformed the s p 500 by about i don't know like nine percent so far um so it's just i want to give you guys this kind of different perspective to understand that there's different types of investing and you can hold these different funds inside your portfolio to to have your portfolio do what you want your portfolio to do and my focus on the cover call etfs is to you know basically get those dividends give myself more flexibility and then i can use them for whatever i want i can spend them i can use them for different things i can stick them on my tfsa to get tax-free income or i can reinvest them into other stocks that's the flexibility of them but at the end of the day i just want to show you guys that they are are good investments but the question you got to ask yourself is are they good for you or is this the right type of investment for you and only you can decide and now it's time to talk about the all-time returns of my stocks inside my portfolio now this is the part that i like to focus on because once again this is focusing on the all-time returns and you guys can see how my stocks have been performing for me inside my portfolio so we'll start with the top the, the basically from the top and work our way down and the, the basically the way this is sorted i believe is by the most quantity or the highest book value of my different stocks or tickers so vfe is my biggest stock right um, $55,000 I have in VFE. I got lots of money in there. It's about 3.69%, so about $1,200 in dividends. So even though a growth fund like VFE, which is very much focused on the US market, the S&P 500, a lot of growth-based stuff, low dividend yield, it still gets a little bit of dividends, right? That still adds up because with the dividends, we, we're getting about a 1.5% gain here, right? Actually, a little bit more than that, about 2 or 2% 2 of gain of those. So stock appreciation of 1.46%, but those dividends do count even for the growth stocks, you know, and, and, you know, and a lot of those ETFs do increase their dividends on a yearly basis. It's a little bit harder to track with the ETFs, but if you look on the fact sheets on the websites, you can actually see it. VDY is a much more dividend focused fund. This is my Canadian uh, based fund. We got about $25,000 in here, total gain of about 21%. So it's been consistently growing and it's been doing quite well, about 10% gain from just dividends alone. So the dividends definitely have compounded and grown. And a lot of these companies are the big dividend stocks in Canada. So that's been aggressively growing. And they do, once again, VDY has consistently been increasing its dividend on a yearly basis on average. The second one here is going to be HYLD, which is going to be our Hamilton cover call ETF. I just finished talking about these ones. So the total return of this is 1.34%. So this one has been consistently growing on a regular basis. Once again, we're down about negative 3%. I did really, I started buying this fund when I first started, but once it kind of dipped down and we saw that drop and I saw that 14% yield, I kind of really jumped on it. You know, it's an ETF that holds a lot of different covered call funds, you know, 
Those funds got hammered last year, and I do believe they're going to recover this year, and I wanted to lock in that yield. So I am going to be still buying it on a regular basis. It's still sitting at, I think, about a 13 a 13 to 14% yield or something like that right now. Uh, but we locked that in and this is going to just keep growing. Like every single month, it's going to give us a 1% yield plus whatever the markets do, which I believe we're going to see at least some kind of recovery or at least even if we just trade a little bit up and down throughout the year, it's going to do well. So 1.34% gain, $660 in revenue, and it makes me a little bit over $100 per month. So that's been super cool. Um, no, going down here, we have some more stocks here, some more dividend stocks, some growth ones. TD is sitting at about 10% gain overall. The banks got hit pretty hard. Um, I still think these the banks are a good stock to buy right now. I hold them obviously in my ETFs and stuff, So, um, but I do like TD. It's my favorite bank. Definitely, I think it's, I mean, TD is always going to be a good time to buy TD. TD uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. ATD is my best stock from a growth perspective, up 32% all time with big dividend increases as well. We're definitely capitalized that down the long term, but it's going to take a while to get there, up 32%. I do have a small holding, about $3,000. This is one I do want to potentially grow in the future. AQN is going to be the next one. We're actually doing pretty good with AQN, only down negative 17. Uh, we were down negative 40%, I think a couple months ago, or a month or two, whatever it was ago, but we've been slowly, it's been recovering. We've been putting a little bit of cash in here and there, and we did just get a dividend payment to help kind of offset that. Um, then we got CNR, TELUS, you know, some other ones. HDIV up 8.27%. So once again, I, I showed you guys the graph that it actually has outperformed the S&P 500, even though it's a covered call ETF. Kind of ironic, right? Well, if you'd listen to what some people are saying, it's kind of ironic, but it's the truth, you know? If you use these funds in the right way and you use them in your portfolio and you and you just be smart about it, right, you can actually get some pretty good value and see growth with these funds. So 8.27%, Fortis is up 14%. I have a small holding of Fortis and Manulife. Um, these are very traditional dividend stocks, 14% and 16% here. Loblaws, unfortunately, isn't reporting here, but I showed you guys before it's up like... Uh, can't remember how much from a percentage standpoint, but it has performed quite well. For some reason, with my computer share account, which is what my employer uses, it doesn't work with Wealthica. I'm going to have to see if I can fix that. POW is the only negative stock I really have other than AQN right now inside my portfolio, and it's down negative 3%. I'm just holding off it for now uh, just to kind of focus on some other holdings, and we'll see. Might keep it, I might sell it. I do have it in my ETF, so we'll kind of see how that goes. CNQ has been an absolute beast, 23% gain, but I wish I held more. But once again, I do have it in VDY as well. It's XCI, I believe. And then we have Canadian Tire at the bottom here. And XCI, our iShares fund that we've been buying with our dividends from HYLD and HDIV, is currently up about 1.74% overall, um, about $4.35. And we got a revenue, which is dividends, about $37. I don't think this updated because we did get some dividends recently, which doesn't look like it was included. So unfortunately, it did not update, but the, the stock is doing quite well. And we will be getting a dividend towards the end of the month, which will be really nice.